Hello, YouTube. Um, hello, arters, artists, and art uh, appreciators. I have a cup of coffee, and we're gonna have a nice little relaxing morning draw thing. I'm in a very colorful mood, so I have like this whole little board um, set up. And I have a fun idea for this video. Okay, so I found this random generator that just generates animals and a possum. This is just an example, but I wish I hadn't done it because it's so many good things. See, it's, so I'm gonna do some animals and then I have a different one that generates different fashion styles. And there, I was originally gonna do like, I was originally gonna do like, oh, like goth, emo, uh, e-girl aesthetic sort of stuff, but I found this generator and I think it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more interesting. It's like less vague than the, the other ideas. So I'm gonna generate one fashion style and one animal, and then I'll explain more as I go. Um, as you can see, I'm drawing out some preliminary bodies. I want to randomly generate some animals, but I don't want to, that to influence the body type. These are drawn really lightly, so. Okay, let's just, let's just generate a thing and then I'll explain more. Armor, okay. Well, number one, armor. It's already going in a different direction than I thought it would. Desmond, I don't know what that is. Des, he's a little creature. <laughs> what the? What is the- this is already- I have no idea. I know like a lot- I'm like pretty well versed in a lot of animals, but I've actually never heard of this. This is astonishing. The first thing. Let me do a real quick sketch of this creature so I can remember what it looks like. It has like big claws and a big tail and an elephant nose. Okay. Big claws, and then he's got like a big nose. He's got tiny eyes. I don't see any visible ears. Okay, well that's our first. <laughs> our first prompt is armor and Desmond. I thought we were gonna go along the lines of like dark academia bunny, but that's fine. We can roll with it. I can do this. Um, <laughs> I did say I would make it random. Now you know that it's truly random because why would I choose to do this to myself? So one of the reasons I wanted to do this challenge was I drew these little characters recently. They're crocodile and like alligator girls and they're very stylish. So this creature, this Desmond, is gonna be in armor. That's how we're doing this. And I'm gonna t approach this from I wanted to approach it from the angle of like a fashion doll, like this is like a um, fashion doll character because I've been watching a lot of fashion doll videos and I've been making a few dolls and things like that. But well, this is, I this, well, what's the point of this challenge, right? Is we're gonna create a little guy. And I pulled together a few colors for this color palette. I don't want this to be, um, go for a Joan of Arc type thing. I didn't want these characters to be influenced by the type of animal they were. I want their, like, personalities to be influenced by the clothing and then them to be the, like, animal and things like that. And I figured I could, like, try out some different body types just in case, like, I don't want to go with, like, oh, it's a mouse, it's a really small, tiny character, or, like, it's a bear, it's, like, a really tall and wide character, like... We're not doing that. We're gonna make our fashion dolls all like unique and stuff. So I'm thinking we go for like a modern-ish style of like, maybe like a cosplay kind of vibe. Like someone who's like really into Ren fairs and like has sort of like pseudo armor pieces that they like to wear too. I'm, I'm not gonna look up any references. This is supposed to, you know, I wanted this to be like a quick video with these like cute little dolls. Um, maybe this is like an action figure. One of the other things I wanted um, was that for each animal for them to have like a unique feature that like if it were a doll, it would have this extra like 
koi piece. Like for my um, crocodile alligator girls, the idea was like their jaws would open. Um, for this, I think I think we have to go for like a prehensile tail probably. Um, almost definitely. Okay, we're gonna give it ears just so it's not earless, but like know that this thing doesn't seem to have any like very obvious ears. Um, Anyways, I believe that more fashion dolls should be made to look like animals. I recently watched that video for of both Izzy's and Darling Dolls did videos on dolls that were like lost dolls and stuff like that. And they talked about Trash and Alley, which is a lost doll line that I wish wasn't lost because it's it looked so cute. It was like a bunch of rats. And I just think that there should be more like anthro dolls because I think that would be super fun. I'm trying to draw these more for the aesthetics than for like, um, you know, neatness of the lines thus far. And then I'll like clean it up near the end. Um, the big thing to think about, of course, is do I give her like long hair? Like fashion dolls typically have or not, it's probably one of the hardest decisions. I don't really care about whether or not dolls have hair, but I know it's like the main feature for some people. So maybe I'll make her look like she's sort of like fuzzy. I was going to make this like a chainmail cowl, but instead I'm going to make it like a scarf type of thing. Like I said, we're, we're going to go for like Ren Fair style. She's a little bit fashionable. She's got like some, maybe some like frills. I probably could have made this more like loosely uh, armor inspired rather than like full on Ren Faire, but it's too late for that now. Okay, so I, I did some coloring and I filled in some things and I also did a little bit more research on this creature. And uh, there was like a BBC documentary on it that called it the weird, finding the weirdest mammal in Europe. Apparently it's a type of mole that's an insectivore. I've decided that, so if she's from like a fashion doll line, right? It's like, it could be like a red wall, which is like a book about like these like warrior nightly mice. Like, okay, imagine like a fashion doll series and it's just about like warrior mice. It's like, we're gonna get young girls into, and you know, like, anybody who wants it, obviously, but like mostly young girls, um, as the target demographic, into uh, nights, and it's going to be with dolls that are animals, but they're dressed up. This, I mean, this would get me as a child. I would be like a, a, a giant mole dressed in knight's armor. I love it. Love the idea. Obviously, every single one has to have giant anime eyes. Um, I'm doing a ra rather simple eye thing for this one because it has, like, really small beady eyes. I definitely think at least the whole entirety of the head would have to be, like, fuzzy in a doll form. And then they would all have, like, little... Definitely all the characters need, like, little bios that, like, explain, like, what kind of animal they are and what time period they're from. So this isn't actually a Renfair look. We're now making this. This is going to be a historical doll line. Um, but the, the focus is is uh, making animals into historical figures. That's it. That's my doll line. And I'm sticking to it for this doll. Okay. So I feel like I went a little too literal with this one. So for the next one, we're definitely going to try and go, like, less... You know, if we get something like armor, I don't want to go with, like, literally armor again. Um, although I, I don't want any repeats, so we're not going to do any repeats if we get armor or Desmond again. Okay, random animal generator. One. Generate animals. Jackrabbit. Going to do that and then pastoral. Okay, so this is going to be, like, very different from the other vibe. So we got pastoral and jackrabbit. But, but the first one was still an interesting exercise. I mean, maybe if we just, like, didn't do the armor as, like, gray, we could have just done sort of, like, a piece together, like, unique, weird outfit kind of thing. But that's okay. We're moving past that. We're doing a pastoral jackrabbit. Let me grab some colors and I'll be right back. Okay, so a jackrabbit's pretty, um, sort of a deserty vibe. I've pulled out some, like, 
both greens and oranges for this. Um, sort of on that spectrum. And then I'm gonna go with a more, I think, yellowy for her sort of head and face. They're like a rabbit that's on the lake. They're sort of, um, well, first of all, they tend to be kind of like skinny little guys. We have sort of a rounder character, but we'll try to think about that more in terms of like, maybe she's wearing more like tight fitting clothes. And also they're like deserty kind of scrub brush land guys. So our theme is pastoral. Um, oh, and definitely if this was a, were a doll, it would have like movable ears that can go back and forth. Um, so the theme is pastoral and I feel like we can really fit that in with this character's vibe. We can do like, but like a pastoral like cactus instead. Yeah, like, yeah, I think a pastoral can really, we can do something that's not like as expected here. I want it to be a little asymmetrical, but not look like, like it needs to look like it's meant to be asymmetrical. Not just that she has like a really wonky bra section. I'm thinking this is like, more avant-garde high fashion character. Let's look up some pastoral info ideas online. I mean, these are just pictures of sheep. Overalls. Overalls is a fun idea. I think I think I want to go for some overalls. Actually, I was gonna do something frilly because that felt pastorally, but I like this overall idea. And like, what if the like clasps are like hidden here? It's like a really, a really weird asymmetrical set of overalls. I feel like it would be funny if we put her in a set of sneakers because that feels very like rabbity, like ja like like jack rabbits are supposed to be fast. So what if she's just wearing like running shoes, but like really stylish running shoes, right? I'm gonna have to like look up sneakers or something. Okay, wait, let's try and give her, um a shirt. Like, what should her shirt be? Like, maybe she does have ruffles. Maybe she's just got a lot of vibes going on. She's like, there's there's cactus, there's ruffles. We can do it all. What if her socks have ruffles on them, too? This outfit's very strange, but we're gonna go with it. And then let's give her, like, sneakers. Okay, I'm gonna be right back after I do some coloring. The more I look at this one over here, the more I hate her, but that's fine. I'll live. This one, second one's turning out a lot better. I think I just wasn't warmed up at all. It's kind of the first thing I drew this morning, so. It's, this is, this is interesting. Just don't look at it, it's fine. I like this one a lot more. It's not something I would normally draw, but it's interesting looking in like a good way instead of a weird way. So here's her after a bit of coloring. Um, I decided I looked it up and yellow flowers are what to go with. And um, I went for like a nice orangey, but like not quite human skin tone. Of course, jackrabbits have huge eyes. So we got to give her the big eyes and she's very fashionable. So it's like, to do some like dramatic eye makeup kind of vibes. I think I, th I think this one fits the prompt well while also being like, like this is like a fun outfit that I think would go well on a doll because like you could take the overalls off and maybe she has like a different pair of pants. And then in the different pair of pants, you could have like, you could have it like match to the frilly shirt or like a skirt to match to the frilly shirt. We'll do like yellow and green to match her outfit. It's a little bit, it's a little bit simple, but also like weird. Like I, I think the rest of her outfit has to be kind of like normal to match like the opposite of whatever's going on with her like top where it's like overalls, but they're also cactuses and they're like uneven, like asymmetrical. Um, but I think that that just makes it more sort of like interesting. 
You just got a simple little mouth. One of the things that I think, like, one of the reasons I, th I think this must be a reason that fashion dolls with, like, animal heads aren't really a thing is because people love the, like, giant lips. And, like, I don't really care. I like big eyes, and I don't think that they need mouths. So that's my take. That's my hot take. They don't need hair, and they don't need mouths. They just need really big, googly eyes. Okay, let us press on. The farther I go, the more I'm like, I want to get rid of the memory of the first one, but that's okay. It's okay. Sometimes we draw things that like don't turn out well and that's fine and that's fine and acceptable and that's okay. Olingo. Well, I don't know what this is, but it looks like a little monkey creature kind of vibe. Oh, he's so cute. Look at he's a little guy. Okay. So he's a little guy with like a super long tail and big eyes. Um, he's got like a little body, little raccoon legs, and then a big tail and just like little round ears and a pointy face. So that's his vibe. And then for clothing, let's go with minimal, a minimal clothing. Okay, we can do that. That's a pretty, I would say minimal's on the broad side, but it'll allow us to be more creative with our little Olingo. I think it looked like they had striped tails. So yeah, like subtle stripes. So we can go with something more on the like creative side with that. They are really cute. Okay. So, big, bushy tail, weird creature thing. That's the vibe we got going on. Um, I did this outline in blue, and that doesn't necessarily need to impact the drawing, but we have done some quite natural looking characters. So I feel like we should do our lingo in, in blues. Like, why not? Why not do it in some blues? Um, like, bluey greens. Actually, I have my Copic markers. I can use them alongside my Tombow markers, and I like to go with like maybe a mint, like a mint, and we can do like, like it was like quite minimal clothing, so we're gonna want to create the elements of the like animal being the most important. Um, it looked like to be a nocturnal animal, so again, like really big eyes. Oh, I forgot to do eyebrows on the bunny and the other thing. Eyebrows are very important, even for your little cartoon creatures. Okay, so definitely this art doll's thing is that it's got to have a big floofy tail. Super long and floofy tail. It's going to look, it is going to look a little squirrel-like. Not going to lie. I don't think we can really... Um affect that too much. I think it's just going to look a little squirrel-like for a while. Um, or forever. That's fine. Or like a lemur? That's kind of what this guy looks like. He looks like a lemur or a squirrel, or like a lemur and a squirrel had a baby with a raccoon. Because I come kind of accidentally completely hid the hands with the bunny. That's like a big, uh, early artist kind of vibe. I'm not afraid of hands or anything. I just kind of accidentally hid them. Um, should we make this one the first one to have hair? Nah, I don't care about hair. Okay, minimal. So we're doing, if we're doing like a blue body or like this like mint body, I think the vibe I want to go for for the minimal clothes is just like maybe just black and white. Like really simple clothes that are not like very colorful and stuff like that. And like, I kind of want to do stripes, but like also not. What if I do, he's got, they've got kind of chunky necks anyway. So like a chunky like... Knit. Ooh. Yeah, I think this will do well with like copying how like the animal looks, like sort of like chunky arms. Oh, it can be one of those like cut off sweaters. Skirt or shorts? 
Maybe just a simple like black skirt with like like one stripe. Now that kind of makes it look like athletic pants. With one stripe along the bottom, maybe? With with one stripe along the bottom and side and it like intersects. Okay. So that gives it a kind of like single plaid stripe kind of vibe. And then this will be like a knit sweater kind of thing, even though the creature looks like it's a tropical creature and probably um, not, not a creature that would wear fluffy clothes, but let's not worry about that. And then just some nice like simple shoes, simple fashion boots style. I think they can just be like black. Okay, I feel like that's pretty minimal um, in vibes. Let me go ahead and <clears throat> color this real quick and I'll be right back. Come to think of it, I didn't really look up what like minimal means in terms of fashion. So I don't know if this is like completely wrong, but you know, let's not worry too much about it. Let me give it ears more like the Olingos that I'm looking at. They're more like rounded. And their faces are actually more like bear-like, I guess. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. Um, but yeah, I don't know if this is minimalist, but this is the vibe that I decided to go with. So I'm using some Copics alongside these. I don't normally use these along with Humbo markers, but I mean, I saw it an artist do this recently. And like, they can go next to each other. They definitely have like a different texture, so there's that, but I think that's not, I mean, I'm just doodling, so that's fine. I have this piece of paper so it doesn't bleed through. That's one of the things is I, I tend to draw on paper that can take Tombow's a bit better than I can take Copic markers, so nice, nice minty color. I don't really have this in Tombow, so. But I like using these two, they like match. They came in the same set and they match very well. I'm, I am drawing over the Tombow a bit more up here than I was at the bottom of the page, so I'm not really sure how that it's gonna turn out. It doesn't seem to be impacting it too much since like Tombow markers are water based and these are alcohol based. Um, I will say the nice thing about using the Tombows together is you can kind of blend out those sketch lines, but in this case they're just going on top of the Copic markers are just going on top of the sketch lines. But that's fine. It just had like little hands, so we're just gonna give it more or less human e digits. Um, because it looked like this creature as it is related to the raccoon, as I read. It, its tail is not super striped in any of the pictures, it just has like some light markings. So I'm just gonna use the same two colors. I like her mint green minimal aesthetic. I like it. I think it's got a lot going for it. I'm gonna add this teal is for my Tombow markers. It could be good for the inside of the ear and maybe some like other sort of minimal details to go with those mint green Copic markers. I think this one's turning out really cute. Um, I kind of wanted to make her eyes purple before but I don't think it would match her color scheme. I might just make them blue to match. Um, I do feel like we gotta do go pretty minimalist with the eye makeup as well. The idea was this would be like graphic eyeliner. No? Yes? How are we feeling about the graphic eyeliner? It is a little much, um, but it's we already did it, so. Attempt at making her boots look a little shiny. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of just some dots around her face. That 
That's all right. She looks cute. Okay, lastly, we have a hippopotamus. Oh my god. A hippopotamus with a flowing, innocent style. So, you know, Gloria from Madagascar. Um, hippo. Flowing, comma, innocent. Interesting. Interesting because hippopotami are terrifying creatures with giant teeth. So, you know, we're gonna make it the opposite of its true form. We're gonna make it beautiful. Okay, so thinking about hippos, we're definitely, definitely going with purple as a vibe for, for the hippo. I think they're, they're just naturally kind of like that pinky, grazy, um, purpley tone. Um, but it's the clothes that we got to think about. Now, I just used a turtleneck on this one, but like, I feel like flowing innocent really has to have... Maybe we could do like a veil, maybe like a veil sort of vibes, like... I do like doing veils on characters that don't have any hair. We could do like some flowers. That's like innocent, right? We're gonna try- she's just like- she's gonna be like a hippo, beautiful hippo goddess who rises out of the river kind of vibes. Man, this would be just a real fascinating toy. <laughs> Who doesn't want a toy hippo? Hippos have giant teeth. Um, they're also like very wrinkly. I feel like we got to definitely do maybe like a toga vibe. Definitely toga vibes because they're very wrinkly and that just makes sense with uh, With like flowing clothes and like a like a belt that's tied with like a long sash. Let's make her veil even longer. Like she has a veil that is also like a cape. Hmm. This should definitely be somewhat see-through. We've got to give like maybe like sandals that'll go with the like toga theme. Let's just give her everything. She's got flowing. She's going to give flowing everything, okay? Flowing sleeves. She's got a veil. She's got sandals. She's going to have her arm exposed, but she's going to have like one of these like little things. So like cut out arm sleeve. Yeah, I think ultimately she's just going to have big human feet. This is gonna be such a fashionable hippo. Oh, I need to figure out what goes on underneath her. Honestly, she's just wearing like underwear. We're, we're just gonna do like a, she's wearing like a, like a leotard type vibe underneath all of her like flowy clothes. And then we're gonna try and make everything like a little bit transparent. Like deciding where I want to start. Cause I have a, Normally I try and like color them in as they go, but I want it to be all like pastel colors and I wasn't really sure what I should go with first. That's the first one where I'm like, where do I start? Well, the shoes I think I can start with because like we know we're going to want the shoes to be like gold, right? Let's go with this. Buttercup yellow Copic marker. And I think I'm going to use to my advantage um, the fact that, like, some of these are Copic and some of these are not to, like, make layering easier because they shouldn't interact with each other as much if I, like, layer, um, thin layers of the alcohol markers with the non-alcohol markers. Hopefully. That's the idea. And then 
I definitely want to go with maybe more like watery vibes. I can do, let's see, what do I have? For this long thing, well, this is so hard. It's so hard to figure out how to like color these in while they're layered. Honestly, she's looking iconic. I love her. Oh my god. Even this whole hand situation is kind of weird, but that's fine. We're just going to go with it. But I think this is super fun drawing in all of those like layers and stuff like that. It's like I've given different things like different levels of opaqueness, so... Well, like, I guess the scarf is supposed to be, like, all wrinkled off. Like, it's, like, folded over itself. Because I want the veil to be the same color as the scarf that's around her waist, more or less. But I suppose the scarf around her waist is, like, also... It's, like, not just one thin layer of fabric. It's all bunched together. Listen, I said I'm not scared of hands, but I didn't say that I do them well. I'm just trying to make them simple. I think one of the last things we have left is the top dress piece. This area. Blues, pinks, blues, pinks. Those are the options, more or less. Um, you know what color is super fun? These two colors are super fun. It's a little weird because it is like not that far off from her skin tone, but we're, not gonna, we're just gonna... Here's the vibe. She's wearing sort of like a top that's like like a leotard-like top, right? But then over it, there's like a chiffon dress thing, blue something, toga. It's all about the layers. She's honestly iconic. Just like, God, look at her. She's so pretty. She's a hippo in a leotard. And she's amazing. Oh, I should have given her less eyeliner because her look is supposed to be like innocent. And I feel like that's a very eyelinerless look, but it's too late. She's just gonna have big, charming eyes. Just big, nice, blue, bluish purple eyes. Okay, so I'm going to do some line art and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I hope you liked this very strange video. Um, I mean, I never would have plan to draw these characters, so there's that. I think some of them are super cute, even though it's super strange. It at least gave me a chance to play with some art supplies that I don't always play with. Um, I do like the hippo concept, although I think some of it's a little iffy. I think these two in the middle were definitely the best overall, most cohesive, this one we don't talk about. Um, tell me which one you like most in the description, I guess. Comments? Not description. Comments. Tell me in the comments below which one you like the most. And yeah, I hope you have a good day, weekend, week, etc. If you've stayed to the end of the video, I can show you a little sneak peek of next week's video, hopefully. Um, if you know what these are for, then uh, stay tuned and, you know, you'll be excited, I guess. And if you don't know what they're for, um, 
hopefully you're intrigued by the tiny feet in hand. Okay, have a good day. Bye.